Jen um, from the Hyperledger community who's joining us today. It's great to be back this year again at the Global Forum. And we're going to be talking about lessons from some of the leading, uh, working with some of the um, both on some of the, the business and industry thoughts as well as uh, technical learnings. And just moving to speaker introductions. Um, Alix, would you like to kick it off um, and let everyone about you? Yeah, sure. So I am the VP of Product Engineering over at Consensus Health. Um, I used to work for Consensus. Uh, prior to that, um, I've been building software with lots of cool, amazing people for the past 20 years, and um, but am educated as a molecular biologist, so did that for some time as well. Hence, um, my crossover uh, into technology uh, was, you know, it, it was apropos that I would end up in healthcare and the life sciences, I guess, and uh, um, yeah, so super excited to be here, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. We're really excited to have you on the panel with us, the leaks. Steve? Hello, everyone. Uh, Steve Cervini. Um, uh, along with Sophia, I'm a co-founder of Kaleido. Uh, Kaleido is a technology company that specializes on blockchain solutions. So while we're here to talk about healthcare today, Kaleido is um, a, a cross-industry uh, solution, um, and it's, it's a SaaS that's focused on helping to simplify the journey for enterprises who are looking to adopt and build decentralized applications and, and, and set up their own consortia or, or business network. So really looking forward to um, diving into some, some lessons learned in, in the healthcare space and, and to talk about maybe what we see um, some new opportunities that are coming down the road as well later on in the session. Thanks, Steve. Um, I guess one thing I'll add is that Steve and I have been working together in the enterprise blockchain space for the last six years, um, ever ever since really the beginning of enterprise blockchain, and um, were active in the initial launching of, of Hyperledger and uh, launch industries first, blockchain as a service together, and have worked with hundreds of clients. So there's certainly a lot of learnings that have been distilled from the first generation of blockchain networks. And now, now as the industries move forward and adopted those, we're really excited to be helping drive um, really a, a second evolution or generation of these projects. So in terms of what we'd like to cover today, um, you know, healthcare is, is, um, is an industry, there's, there's really a lot of areas where blockchain can, can solve some age old um, problems and pain points where, with friction and cost of intermediaries. Um, you know, the, the, the holy grail in blockchain is interoperability and that, that can mean different things for different people. Um, but when you're looking at shared data, shared application logic between parties, whether that's uh, public, can be more public data or uh, the most sensitive data that exists, um, there's been a, a lot of work in the space over the past half decade um, seeing how blockchain can help. But, you know, at the core, similar to other industries, you know, there's a fragmentation of systems or siloed systems the ability to bring multiple parties together around a common view um, of the data to provide better business outcomes, better uh, client experiences. In the healthcare space, we often talk about bringing together the payers, the providers, the employers, and, and the patients. So as um, the networks we're working with are really looking to reimagine um, healthcare and life science solutions using blockchain, you know, what, what has that been looking like? So we'll, we'll get into that a bit and then um, really spending a majority of the time on industry best practices, lessons learned, um, looking at you know, technology, solution architectures, uh, usability management and operation. Um, and in terms of outcomes, I think really one interesting thing with COVID over the last year has been the acceleration of digital transformation efforts. Um, 
using these decentralized technologies, moving to the cloud, and replatforming as well as launching brand new systems. So with that, I'll pass it over to Elise, who'd like to uh, take us through this survey. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, is it a survey? What's happening? Yeah, <laughs> let's get a slide, lots of names on it, um, some of the really big names. Uh, no, it's it's most important that, you know, this, I think the talk has a lot to do with consortiums as well. And like, what does that even mean? And why do we, we bring all of these big giants together? Um, but, you know, we have, you know, Consensus Health, I know quite as well, you know, we, we've helped with many different consortiums. Um, you know, when we have a technology like blockchain, we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, why are we even using blockchain half of these times? And, you know, fundamentally, I'm just happy that an emerging nascent technology and, and that's so much further along and even in healthcare than people realize um, is forcing like that reimagination of, you know, industries that are otherwise, you know, a little complacent or have been dormant and and are really just jumping into innovation and I'm I'm proud of, of the movement amongst these consortiums that are listed here uh, particularly the work that they are doing in that patient provider payer relationship and how we make that in the user experience better um, you know, when we institute a blockchain solution, typically uh, at the core is that trust layer that is missing between these systems. And we talk about interoperability. Again, as Sophia alluded, it, it is different for everyone. And, and what that term means, um, I always question between interoperability amongst many blockchains, many systems, does it have anything to do? with uh with um you know the system the blockchain at all um it it is this trust layer that we can gather these insights and um for good reason uh the consortiums and and the partners that we've had along the way uh crypt like the cryptography involved uh, with securing something to the blockchain, everyone feels very confident that, hey, if we share this information, it's going to be safe. If we share this information, it's immutable. Um, can we please centralize everything? Unfortunately, that's how it goes. So we centralize all this data in order to decentralize it later. And this is just the piece stepwise way this gets done. Um, ultimately, after we, we could probably advance to another slide because there's lots of big names and you see that there's lots of consortiums doing lots of things, sorry. <laughs> um, eventually, uh, the end goal is, at least for the clients that I've worked with, um, is that there is this self-sovereignty of our healthcare, like digital blueprint. Um, for lack of a better word, off the top of my head. Um, so the the sense that the goal is the self-sovereign piece and that we will have the ownership of that healthcare data, who sees it, who uses it, um, then you get into topics that are like, you know, because I'm sharing this data, I'm receiving some kind of benefit or reward. And that leads us into the, the use cases um, beyond digital identity management, but into, you know, the, the like the clinical trials matching, clinical trials have difficulty with recruitment and retention, you know, so we're now using this consortium and this shared data to glean results and and compute, which a lot of people uh, refer to as federated learnings or federated analytics, you know. So as far as that goes, the other use cases in our industry in healthcare and life sciences are also around just like that fraud prevention 
for insurance and due to the verifiable credentials and the decentralized way in which somebody can can control their own healthcare data at the end of the day. Um, as far as this slide goes, um, you know, we talk a lot about how we have these data lakes and then we have these, these data warehouses and what we're moving towards again by evolving and bringing together these, these giants and these consortiums and, and sharing each other's systems because this is the deal, like what, what takes so long in, in a healthcare tra transaction is just the fact that some administrative person has to run over to their system and go, okay, let me tell you if in my system what you said is true, and then you can go get your medication or then you can go have your service with your healthcare provider. If we could immediately uh, make that decision on their behalf because we're sharing that information and there isn't that additional administrative payload, we can have, you know, on-prem, like on-demand availability for our end user, which is the patient in, in specifically in the healthcare industry, right? So due to all of that, we're trying to evolve these data sets into these derived insights and and this derived language of what that blueprint is and mapping to their payer and provider relationships. And those payer and provider relationships as they join, you know, systems and consortiums, they are able to better share and better, better to accommodate and alleviate those pain points that the patient's going through. And these are these are oftentimes very sick people. This is oftentimes people that are, you know, caring for someone's healthcare journey on their behalf and 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 have a guardian or an advocate of some sort. So, you know, for all of us to come together and to alleviate some of these pain points is is a tremendous effort and it's going to be good for for all of us at the end of the day. So um, some other use cases that we see, you could advance to the next slide. Thank you, Sophia. <laughs> um, what are these slides? I think there's maybe some stuff missing in here, but that's okay. Um, so there, you know, the other use cases that we see <clears throat> as well is, you know, the supply chain management where we're talking about medical supplies and pharma and, you know, just that track and trace uh, methodologies that blockchain so cleverly employs and, and everyone, you know, tends to appreciate you know when we when we look at blockchain really obvious obvious areas of focus and vertices are you know financial services and then another obvious area of focus is is to me has always been healthcare because that's where you know we have the need for an individual to be able to control that information and we have a need for them to be the one that validates that information that's been collected against them. Um, in the use cases of clinical trials matching, depending on like the therapeutic area of discussion, you know, having that distributed thought process of, of inclusivity of who gets to participate in those clinical trials, but also knowing that it's, it's, it's crazy because when I, entered this industry, I just assumed, I mean, I assumed so many things, but the person's getting the benefit of that participation and getting the reward and whatever tokenized way you want to do that, you know, that is something that we're trying to elevate in like clinical trials. And I know Pharma Ledger, I'm sorry, D DTRA, which is like a decentralized trials and research alliance they're you know doing a lot of great work there um we have an opportunity to build that space to where if you are participating in that clinical trial you are you know motivated to share your health data to share your journey and we can better you know the outcomes on the other side same with pharma ledgers 
as I was about to mention, you know, they want to develop things like personalized medicines and, you know, in order to entrust that my either, either it's my genomic data or my healthcare blueprint is synthesized adequately. Uh, what we commonly do is we compare and contrast it against other, other healthcare data sets like mine, be it from a genetic, genetic basis, be, be it from a therapeutic basis, be it from, you know, just a, a symptoms basis, you know, there's, there's all kinds of beautiful ways that we can we can involve that personalized medication and and uh, catering to the human involved and not to general pop. So um, I think I think this slide or there was a slide. I know this is bananas. I think what's happening up there. <laughs> um, no, I mean I don't see like some of the little things, uh, but I think at the end of the day, like that the the slide is saying <clears throat> it isn't blockchain exclusively is not what solves all these problems but it is that public private nested blockchain combo loco as we say in texas uh it's it's going to be the uh you know it's going to be a lot of things and it's and it isn't you know sufficient on its own um so we've been working you know again that interoperability work word comes back up over and over again but you know blockchain is just is just one piece to this much larger pu puzzle especially when integrating healthcare systems and um over here to the side in that brilliant bubble of a venn diagram just to give it some flavor, because I don't know if, if, if you can see it, you know, it's just those chronic pain points and reiteration is, you know, cybersecurity, privacy, identity, um, compliance, and my most important favorite one there is the bioethics of all this all. So yeah, so that is kind of where consensus health is seeing the industry, the use cases involved, and I do want to, close it out there because I believe we have a lot more from Kaleido and their brilliant knowledge of Hyperledger and the other protocols of blockchain. Yeah. All right. Um, I was just trying to get back into present mode. Didn't realize the slide was a build. I thought there were some issues with uh, just the images. So, well, thanks, Alix. Um, so, I guess one interesting thing about, as you mentioned, really, what is a blockchain consortia? Some clients will start, or companies will start with an internal project in their own company. But then as these projects mature, you know, they bring in um, the business relationships that exist in their industry. And it can often be, you know, a co-opetition situation. So you have, you know, pay to be efficient around claims or certain types of data sets. And so it makes it, and then they're working in the ecosystem with the, the, the providers and others. So privacy is really important because they want to share needed for the use case, but they also need to keep private, um, you know, what's important for them as a business and confidential. Um, so you really get into a lot of interesting situations um, in, in healthcare and life sciences. As, you know, one insight we've seen working, you know, half decade in this space is that the, the blockchain layer itself is only five to 10% of the solution. Um, there, there's typically over, you know, 40 or so components across um, the different off-chain layers, the decentralized tech, and when you're looking at the application apps and middleware, and, and looking to solve you know, different uh, problems and provide different functionalities across those layers. So I think in the early reality of enterprise IT is that uh, companies need to privately exchange documents, 
um, five, you know, there's a mismatch that happens. The applications are talking to each other. So uh, in order to actually get to a successful solution, you know, how can you do this and, and build these solutions in a, in a cost-effective, you know, enterprise production grade manner? Um, so what, what you're really looking at with the enterprise blockchain solution is blockchain is the beating heart of that. And you can you can see that here. You know, there's the data layers that people often look at. You're looking at the transactions, and, and Alix mentioned some privacy considerations, sending events, you know, out out and consuming them with other you know backend systems and vice versa and then of course the middle and application tiers as well as thinking about business operations and devops for for this whole consortium with the decentralized parties kaleido is really built to approach um, these these problems with uh, a solution that takes the perspective of the network operator of the consortia and making these business networks radically simple for for the enterprise so enterprise grade and we've been um, as Steve mentioned working across industries worldwide what's really important for these consortia as they scale and grow is they need to have lots of flexibility and choice so depending on the use case um, you know they may start on one blockchain protocol and move to another uh, as they see where they're getting the best trade-offs between performance and, and scale, and security, privacy. Um, and then as they're onboarding new members in their network, they typically start with you know, maybe five or six participants and cross-cloud, multi-region, and hybrid deployments as well. Uh, we offer consortia as a service for healthcare and life sciences, and you can see what, um, user system admin perspective. So lots of rich analytics, monitoring. You can see what's happening across the consortia, the health of the network, as well as drill down on your own resources um, that that you have line of sight to and visibility to to manage those. I think another you know learning for from a network operator. You really need to look at this as a decentralized multi-party platform and think about the control where the plan and needs to be completely decentralized and the members have private isolated instances they own of their own resources. As I mentioned, we really, you know, Fido's built for this in mind. And if you look at blockchain as the core, you know, there's a variety, you know, 40 different plug and play services across B2B collaboration, apps and integration, digital assets, key management, and more that come into play to be able to rapidly assemble these sorts of solutions. And I, uh, we do have a very deep commitment to open source. I think this is a good segue to transition to, to Steve's portion, if you'd like to take it from here. Yeah, that, yeah, Sophia. Um, well, you were just mentioning a minute ago, really the, the full stack problem of, of building a decentralized solution. Um, you know, and, and there are open source, uh, Hyperledger is, is obviously leading the way. There are open source communities focusing on different layers of that problem. So as Kaleido, we think about the, the full stack of the problem. I know Consensus Health does as well. We're involved in many of these communities from the protocol layers at the bottom, you know, through to off-chain pieces like Chainlink and IPFS and others, you know, standards bodies, things like tokens um, as well. And, and I want to spend just a couple of minutes to let you know about a, an, an exciting new uh, project called Firefly. Um, that was was just announced earlier this week with the Hyperledger Global Forum here, um, and if if you think about that that full stack problem, we we see a gap. Uh, there there's there's been a gap in some of the off chain plumbing layers that Sophia was ta talking about a minute ago, that are really important in in highly regulated industries like the healthcare industry where you know a lot of those consortia that Elix was talking about earlier you know would choose to implement their data flows off chain there, there are just too many concerns uh you know around 
the fact that on-chain data is there forever, uh, the ability to update uh, that data, not just not just remove the data if needed. That that alone is enough. Um, you know, any leakage to to parties, you know, unintended. Each blockchain protocol works differently, but there are you know considerations and trade-offs there. Um, you know, and 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 performance as well. So, so many of these healthcare use cases need high throughput or, or low latency. Uh, and so for a variety of reasons, those, those data flows are often built off chain. Um, and that could mean for you in the past that has meant for you, um, you know, just a lot of work and, and, and plumbing and, and trying to reinvent the wheel and, and build those plumbing layers over again. And Firefly is, you know, the, the first open source multi-party system. You may have heard that that term in the industry before, but we sort of define that as, um, you know, a larger system that's powered by blockchain. So there's still a, a blockchain running in the core, providing, you know, the core value that blockchain does: global ordering, finality. Um, and shared shared source of truth, the, the, all of those sorts of things that blockchain's great at doing. Um, there are just a, a set of other infrastructure runtimes that are in the uh, Firefly node um, that take all that common plumbing off off your hands. So if you sort of zoom into uh, a Firefly node, just to give you a, a quick sense of, of some of those other technologies, um, things like uh, private off-chain messaging or exchanging a document um, between two parties within a network. Uh, how, how do you do that reliably, you know, chunk it up, uh, asymmetric encryption, PKCS7 encryption, deliver that across a pipe, uh, reassemble it on the other end uh, with pinned proofs along the way um, uh, using the blockchain, for example, to to guarantee that the document is the original document. Um, and, and so those sorts of, of technologies are just there. They're, they're just in the box or really encourage you to, to, to check it out. We found that um, as many as 90% of the use cases looking even more broadly across industries have some of these sets of, of needs. Uh, and then sitting there at, at the core, is this very simple API that just comes up um, and, and you can code your, your applications um, uh, with, with very simple APIs to, to just uh, make those calls. Uh, so if you, if you move on to the next slide, um, so, so far I mentioned that, that blockchain is in the box with Firefly. Again, this is, this is a new project that was announced. It's, it's part of Hyperledger. Um, the, the larger Hyperledger uh, community. Um, it, it, there is a support for the big three enterprise protocols. So Ethereum variants like Hyperledger Besu, um, as well as Hyperledger Fabric, which is coming uh, in, in Corda as well. If you wanna learn more about Firefly, there is an entire uh, half day event uh, going on uh, tomorrow, Friday, um, it's, um, it, it's, if you want to sign up, you can see the schedule there at that URL. We'll also put into the chat, there, there is a link directly through the, the Hyperledger form that you can get to this. It's a, it's what's called a co-located event. So sort of part of the larger conference, but it's, it's dedicated as a launch event to Firefly. So it's a very exciting project that, Hopefully that's just a few minutes on it, but it, we, we think it's gonna be really important. The idea of these multi-party systems as a, as a larger platform that for, especially for industries like, like the healthcare industry where um, you know, the data is, is almost always sensitive, just like Alex is talking about, there are other systems that you need to connect to. You have to thinking about AI, um, um, big data, you know, IoT type systems all sorts of, of other considerations that, that you may want to think about. So, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back maybe to Sophia, who, who can help uh, wrap us up in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, so just wanted to have, uh, extend a big thanks to Alix for joining us and talking about a consensus health and your perspective on um, 
blockchain and healthcare and life sciences. Thank you, Steve. And thanks everyone who joined the session. I hope you have a great uh, rest of the conference day today. And feel free to reach out um, to Steve and myself with, with any questions and Elix as well, um, post the session. Thank you, everybody.